Now this, for reasons that will be obvious to you, is one of my favorite commitments. I'd like to ask Bob Goff of the Intertribal Council on Utility Policy to come out and describe the next commitment. Aukola. It's my pleasure to invite to the stage leaders from six Sioux nations. Wayne Ducheneau from Cheyenne River. Eric Big Eagle from Crow Creek. Thurman Knoyer from Yankton. Cyril Scott from Rosebud. Brian Brewer from Oglala. Robert Shepard from the Sisseton Wapaton. I would also like to invite out Mr. John Kennis of Aaron Fox, LLP, Pamela Morritt from the Bush Foundation, Carolyn Heron from the Heron Consulting, Michael Jeffert from Liotti Group, Melissa Berman from the Rockefeller Philanthropy Advisors, and Mr. Kevin Walker of the Northwest Area Foundation. This is what the challenge is. Wind power is domestically sourced, can't be depleted, and creates no air pollution. If fully developed, South Dakota's wind power alone could meet 75% of the nation's energy, and some of South Dakota's best locations for wind power development are on tribal lands. Yet, only one commercial wind project exists on tribal lands to date. This is due in large part to governance and regulatory issues that limit tribes' ability to benefit from the tax incentives and revenue creation associated with wind power. How we are addressing that. Through this 2013 commitment, together with our private, nonprofit, and philanthropic sector partners, including um, our own and others represented on the stage, Six tribes of the Great Sioux Nation of South Dakota will establish the Ochete Sikawin Power Authority for the purpose of developing a tribally owned 1,000 megawatt commercial scaled distributed generation wind farm and transmission system. This multi tribal. Oh, thank you. This multi-tribal power authority will be funded by private grants, investments, and more than $2 billion in public power bonds. This bonding authority gives the tribes the means to finance the wind project and still retain ownership of these assets. This innovation, innovative commitment will more than double the wind power capacity of South Dakota, resulting in 550 clean energy jobs created or filled and generate surplus revenues that will be invested back into our tribal communities. Thank you. I would like to explain why this is such a big deal, potentially an even bigger deal than the announcement. First of all, when this project is completed, it is so large, uh, South Dakota will go from second or third in the country in the percentage of its baseload electrical generating capacity in wind to first. 
Texas is first today. On a good day, 25% of Texas electricity comes from wind. And um, Iowa and South Dakota are close behind. Secondly, it gives native tribes who don't have, who aren't in populous areas and don't have casino revenues, a chance to earn some real money that can then be used to reinvest in the community, to diversify the economic base that exists, and build out a lot of small businesses, support the schooling system, do a whole range of things that otherwise there would be no funds for. This has been an obsession of mine, actually, since I was president. And it has always bothered me that the green energy revolution had escaped the tribal lands by and large, especially those west of the Mississippi, which are disproportionately in areas with very high sunlight and very good wind. And so the idea that these different tribes can join together and therefore collectively generate enough power to be able to have these bonds to do the financing and then do it all and still maintain appropriate ownership is an amazing thing. So this advances America's energy independence, our desire to generate more clean electricity, uh, the imperative of doing something for our native peoples because those who live on tribal lands without casinos still have, on average, the lowest per capita income in the country. The only group of Americans with a per capita income lower than the Mississippi Delta, lower than South Texas, lower than Appalachia, lower than the poorest urban communities in our country. This is an amazing thing. And if it works, there are a lot of other tribal lands and a lot of other tribes out there who will be able to take this and make their contribution to our country's future in a way that enables them finally to have a non-government ready cash source that will enable them to build a whole different economic future for their children and for the future of our country. This has, this, the potential of this is staggering, and I want to thank all of these people again for what they have done.